Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave, and I am answering Mythbuster questions submitted by tested patrons. And uh, Andrew Bahals, B-A-H-L-S, Bahals, Bahals? Uh, Andrew Bahals wants to know, this is a nice one, uh, what Mythbusters myth result had a direct impact on your everyday life? For me, after watching the myth that everyone uses the first soul in the public restroom, so therefore you should use the last one, of which the popularity of the myth proved its bustedness. <laughs> Complicated sentence structure, but I get you. Uh, Andrew says he immediately started using the first stall and saw a marked improvement, not that the bar is particularly high. Um, yes. Yeah, um, the bacteriological myths definitely removed, um, they definitely, how do I put this? Things are way dirtier than I realized. Once we started sampling stuff using, um, using uh, agar, soy agar plates and growth media and, and, and ovens to grow bacteria in petri dishes, um, what we learned was the world is filthy and we are a colony of filthy bacteria and all sorts of stuff. And a lot of that it, like, helps us run correctly. But like, make no mistake, 99% of the cells in your body are non-human in origin. You and I, we are all colonies of organisms. Mythbusters really helped solidify that for me. Um, I too now take the first bathroom stall. Immediately after that story, I started taking the first bathroom stall and I too have noticed an improvement, albeit the bar is low. Uh, but the most radical shift in my life from making a Mythbusters episode was our Mythbusters flu spreading episode which came in handy this year. Uh, having made my own, made our own high-speed shots of transmissible sneezes, how far they go, uh, talking about the size of bacteria, double dipping with, with, when we, where we learned that humans shed like 50 to 100,000 skin scales per hour as they just move, as we move through the world. Um, So what was the difference that it actually made? I know, that's the question. The difference that it made for me in the time of COVID and the lockdown was to feel somewhat confident that the measures I was taking were enough. Um, they gave me, uh, and I'll wager all the other Mythbusters, although I haven't checked in with any of them, it gave me a perspective from which to look at the best available recommendations for comporting oneself in order to not receive the virus. And to be totally clear here, my hero in this regard is Carrie Byron. Because if you haven't watched the flu episode, I think it's still up for free. Discovery put it up shortly after the lockdown, which is awesome of them. Um, and in that episode, I we replicated a scientific methodology from a famous a uh, flu spreading experiment in which I had a fluorescent dye dripping th right off the side of my nose from my glasses, something that I had to deal with like a, like a post nasal drip. And we held a dinner party. And at the end of the dinner party, we put black light on the table and everything was covered with the fluorescent dye that had started at my face. Everything, everything. It was on wine glasses, on all the silverware, on all the plates. And oh my God, it was absolutely disgusting. Totally disgusting. And you know who didn't have one little bit on them? And that is Carrie Byron, who was already a bit uh, germ phobic. And boy, was she, was she like, seemed to be the god of academe in our team on that front. So like when lockdown happened, I just want you to know that I had no worries about Carrie and how she would, how she would fare. <laughs> um, the bacteriological myths were also some of the most fun scientific methodologies that we did, which is funny. I didn't expect that, but like coming up with a, a, a correct methodology, a, a reasonable methodology for double dipping in salsa in which I blended soy agar, sterile soy agar, I sterilely blended it into a mash of that was, that was the same texture as salsa so that you could dip it and bite it. Yeah. So what you do is you have people dip in salsa 
take a bite and then dip in the soy agar and take that bite away. And then we would test to see if any of the bacteria from their bite ended up in the soy salsa. And the answer is it didn't. Double dip to your heart's content as long as you're working with a dry chip. Let's just be clear. Um, yeah, double tip to your heart's content. You, you, there's no issues there whatsoever. George Costanza was being a bit of a jerk when he was double dipping, but I'm here to tell you that the science supports him. How many times did I say, I'm here to tell you? It's, it's ridiculous, a ridiculous thing. Of course, you're watching. Of course, I'm, yeah, that's it's, it's just like a flourish that's unnecessary. I think I might try and remove it from my vocabulary. Yeah, I might. Um, let's see. Nope, that's about it, Andrew. I really, oh, you know what? The other one, the other one that really changed my life was that your mood affects your fuel efficiency more than almost any other single thing. Understanding that and realizing it and then watching myself and seeing the way I drive when I'm mad, the way everyone drives when they're mad, that was, that was fascinating. Fascinating. And it really has... Uh, it, it's definitely changed the way I drive since we shot that story. Andrew, thank you for that great question. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, to everyone on uh, Tested Patrons of the Tested Patrons, please keep submitting your questions and I will keep enjoying answering them. Thank you guys so much. Stay safe, wear a mask, happy holidays, uh, and I'll see you next time.